not long left of the Football Manager 2022 cycle and we still have not made a dent in Europe. So we're going to do something different. This is Beyond Blue Brazil. Welcome in. What if I said over the next two episodes we were going to do an entire season? That's the plan. It's been a busy summer. We've had some sales. We've made some signings, certainly. And we've already started the season. Let me get, get you up to speed on results. All wins so far. That's how we want this to continue going. We've got the draw for the Champions League group stage today. That is our focus. Those are the games we're going to bring you. We'll bring you important games also but the only important games we're going to bring you are basically cup finals at this point domestically we're well on top i anticipate being well on top this season and i'll show you why in a second we've actually been really busy um this past uh this window just gone by we we early on identified some players that potentially could move on and they moved on quick Gordon Johnson left us for 15 million. I think it was the right time. He's gone to Crystal Palace. Obviously doubled in value because of the wage they're paying him, but it was about time to move on. Mina was our main man last season, and we haven't hung around and just decided to go with Mina again. We've gone and bought another striker. Alex Scott, similar uh, to Gordon Johnson, sold for 12 million this time to Aston Villa. Again, just felt we could do better, and his time with us was successful, but... It has come to an end. Lennon Donaldson at one point was our record transfer uh, fee of like 11.5 million. We've sold him for 7.75 million. We just, I felt like we needed money in. Lewis Thompson is my first choice left wing back. So no need to keep Lennon Donaldson about. Charlie McCarthy, this one's a bit of a shocker. We actually sold him for 9.25 million, which is a really good return on the 2.7 or 9.5 million. Really good return on the 2.7 million we spent a couple of seasons ago bringing him into the club. But yeah, as you can see, raising lots of cash and capital. Um, we followed that up. Pedrinho has, has left us 6.25 million. Not a bad um, return as well. We bought him for 100k. We didn't actually get that much money on that in the end because the board have actually lowered... Um, our retention which is annoying it's kind of it's actually a bug in the game i didn't realize till recently that it keeps resetting to 60 percent very frustrating we sold our third choice backup goalkeeper daniel robles moves on for 3.5 million our backup goalkeeper also moves on um lee who's the main man a few seasons ago he he was sold for 18 million that's outstanding inconsistent really frustrating frustrating player moved him on again crystal palace they're obsessed with me now for some reason they also outbid me and bought players i was trying to buy so really frustrating to see crystal palace have all that money in the championship but let's let's get to the important stuff the signings we've made free signings so far but i'm really happy with how we've spent our money including a new record transfer fee first in miguel benavidez another center back and another center back that you can look at already and go He's an absolute baller, and he is. He's going to be great at this level. Great physicals, big, strong presence, good positioning, good technicals. No doubt, Man United, Man City, all that will be chasing him end of this season, but I think he's really good. We, we got him for 11 million, an absolute solid buy. I'll actually cover the new goalkeeper first. He's going to be first choice. Ukoda didn't really deserve to lose his spot, but this guy's better, and because he's better, he's going to play. Great player, 28-year-old um, Moroccan goalkeeper. Bought him in for about 9 million from PSV. He is, he's going to be our main guy. Uh, Udoka is actually going to play our cup games. Possibly even some of our Champions League games, but the big focus now is let's do something in Europe. Let's, let's at least get past that first knockout round. We're going to try and get through a season very quickly in these next two episodes so that we have a chance to do another season and then possibly another you know, that's what we're aiming for. I'm trying to keep this really short, so here's the last signing. He's our record transfer fee, and he is the man. Uh, Bernardo Manso joins us. He was wanted by ourselves in Bayern Munich. Somehow he chose ourselves in the end. Um, I think Bayern just didn't pull the trigger quick enough. But yeah, he is an outstanding wee player. 22 years old, perfectionist. 
can play with both feet. He's going to get better. He needs to because we're putting our faith on him in terms of really pulling up some uh, results in the Champions League this year. He's better than Mina. Mina's great, but this guy could be next level. He could be the, the level you need if you're going to challenge in the Champions League, and that's what I'm hoping from him. Champions League group draw today. We'll do the draw, and then I will return when there's there's something more to talk about. To be honest, I'm thinking we do the draw. We'll then almost cover results in that after, and we will we'll bring you the first knockout round. Everything going well. I'll maybe bring you the very last European games, but we are really trying to horse through this because there's not long till FM. Uh, 23 comes out and I really do want to see if we can do something with the squad and it might not be this season so if, if we fail in Champions League I'm basically going to just bring you what happened and um, some of the goals and that and we'll move on because there's no time like the present. Here's the draw so unfortunately this season I don't know what has happened, our coefficient is up, but our, our actual coefficient I don't know if it's taking a kick in our water or if other teams have just burst past us but we are we are down we are third seeds now last season was our first season as first seeds feels like something went incredibly wrong that we are we are down as third seeds i i actually don't know how that's happened i'll have to go back and have a look i'm pretty sure we were first seeds last season so we've got a very tough group this season which is doesn't um help us at all It's going to be Group H. Magic. You could see that one coming a mile off. We've got Southampton and Barcelona. You're like, Southampton? That's not bad. Problem is with Southampton, they're an English team. They are going to be absolutely minted. They're probably going to be way better. The fact that Southampton have qualified for the Champions League should be a tip-off. This is not your average Southampton team we'll be dealing with. But we'll see how the group stage goes and then hopefully we'll get into that first knockout round. And that's that's the plan. So like smash cut now to me wearing something completely different. My hair done a little different. Maybe my, my beard longer. It depends how long this takes. But simple fact is domestically we know we're going to be okay. Before we do that, let's actually take a look at the league. And this is why I think there's no point in bringing in the league is I don't want to say I've won it already. But you know. It's, it's four years on the spin, and we finally destroyed Rangers and Selic's resolve. Um, Selic, first three games of the season, only one win. They've lost to Motherwell and Dundee. Rangers, they've got one point in three games. They've lost to ourselves already and Hibernian. So the old firm are crushed. You know, we just want to continue, go well from here. We'll give game time to our, our young players and stuff again. Pray that our youth intake comes good this season, but Europe is where we want to be. It's what we want to focus on, so that's what we're going to do. So, smash cut to the future, I guess. And we're back. Last time, uh, we covered the first three games we've played. We've played a lot more. Let's cover the Cinch Premiership first and see if we're going to retain our title or how we're looking at this stage of the season. It's gone very well. It was a little ropey. I'm not going to cover all the games, but as you can see, we've been pretty good. In fact, the thing that stands out is Hibs beating us 1-0. Um, disappointing game comes off the back of another disappointing game where we drew 1-1 with Rangers. I've got to say that Rangers and Celtic have been poor this season. Um, it, we are well on course to retain, you know, the highlights probably this season has been Mance, so has has been pretty good. He has had spells where he hasn't scored, which is worrying. But um, early on this season, he was delivering big time. A couple, little bit of injuries here and there. But yeah, league, as expected, going very well. We'll cover the Premier Sports Cup as well. So the Premier Sports Cup, um, we've actually played all those games, won the Premier Sports Cup. Uh, lots of rotation. <laughs> it was actually one, maybe the, our worst run to the final, we didn't draw Rangers, didn't draw Celtic in it. We played Ross County in the final, a team that we had an opening day win not over not that long ago. There was 8-0. We got past them 1-0 in the final. Uh, Thomas with a header. Um, you'll see that the likes of Will love it and some of the other youngsters have been getting game time. So 
Um, that might play into the penalty shootout with uh, St. Johnson was actually quite intense because I had once again sort of tried to rotate. Archie Buchanan played a lot of that game. Um, left out Santiago, <laughs> Santiago Velasco and stuff. Really trying to utilise the squad as, as much as possible while still wanting to win that trophy. We did win it, which is very good. Um, yeah, overall, everything's been going fine. And you'd be surprised to hear how our Champions League has gone on. Quite an interesting one. Uh, we only lost once in the Champions League. But there's a caveat to that. We drew three games. Can you see where this is leading as we enter the knockouts? Um, it's not good news, I would say. We came third in our group. We unfortunately finished a point behind Southampton. Yeah, we beat Ghent twice, but not being able to beat anyone else um, has really cost us. The, the draws with Southampton in particular just a very disappointing group stage for us. It has opened up a door of opportunity. Because we finished third, we're actually in the Europa League now. And um, it looks a little like this. We play Mines uh, in the first knockout round. As we drop down, they'll have come second in their group. So we take on Mines here. That is the game we're going to play in a moment. That's how far I've gone through the season. The intention is to have this season wrapped up in the next video. But the only games that really matter is the European games. If we have a quick look at the Premiership, we're 12 points clear at the top of Rangers. Celtic just in behind. Celtic had a terrible start of the season. They, they've they come on pretty hard and, and really started to put together a good run um, after replacing their manager. Mother will have dropped off a little bit, which is good because Marwell were proving a pretty tricky customer. Don't like to see Aberdeen that low. Ross County are on a terrible run. I think what you'll notice as well, our top goal scorer is not in the top three scorers in the league, which is a little um, concerning. If we have a quick look at Manso. Bernardo Manso, 15 goals in the Premiership, five assists. He's been very good. Um, four goals in three appearances in the Champions Cup. The reason why he only played three times in the Champions Cup has been a little bit of injuries. Still quite a small squad, so rotation has been been pretty active with rotation. Try to keep Mina happy. It's um it's all very much still going on. I can't remember if I made any changes. Um oh <laughs> we made loads of changes. Um January window was interesting. So we ended up selling <laughs> oh god I forgot about all this. This is the problem trying to condense this down. Right, so we sold um, Jack Casey, Udoka, and Albert Thomas in January. Albert Thomas has moved to PSG. Udoka has moved on for 27 million. He was our backup goalie. Um, so with those changes, we had to bring in players. We've been pretty active. We've brought in Andre Corrales from Real Madrid. Brino uh, from uh, RB Leipzig, I think that is RB Leipzig. Um, Ardit Agushi from Athens for 9.25 million. Joe Jin Huke from Fiorentina for 2.5 million. And Edin Rosic for 4.4 million. So we'll, we'll quickly cover these players. Uh, now, Andre Corrales uh, is a centre back. Decent physical lad, tall. Just a good option, to be honest. Um, Needed a bit more depth, given that we're selling centre-backs left, right and centre. Uh, Brino comes in as the backup goalie. A lot of potential, um, but he is there to sort of like come in and provide backup if needed. But we'd need a lot of work. Glad we've still got our main man. Arda Agushi, um, really like him. Midfielder, lots of potential, I would say. Issue being his personality is fickle, but I think you can look at him and say that Overall, he's quite a well-balanced player. Um, bit of a weak left foot, but yeah, very useful in how we play with, um, you know, he can play central midfield, uh, several uh, different roles, which we would need. Uh, Jojen Huck, very similar. He's also into sort of um, cover the midfield. This He's a bit more well-balanced overall already, but maybe less potential, but still of the right quality. So domestically, no problem throwing him in. And that's kind of what we're, these players be brought in rather than go out and 
throw heaps of money at someone I've brought them in to sort of provide that depth that we need so that our better players are fit for our bigger games Edin Rossick uh, comes in very similar he actually plays up the spine defensive midfield midfield attacking midfield which we don't play he can also fit in his striker just uh, a nice little purchase a lot of potential I like him but he's, I see him more as a midfielder than a striker but we'll see how things go on only 20 years old so yeah we kind of um brought in a lot of money ended up spending a lot of money but a lot of that was from the start of the season so um really just trying to top things up if we have a look at our finances right now um 38 million in the bank 8 million still left to spend uh january window is obviously finished the intention is um to get through the season and hopefully see how much money we get at the end of it but it didn't it's I'm not going to lie and say it, it crossed my mind that one of the easier things to do to get Cowden B further in Europe was potentially match fixing. Now, I'm not saying I did that. There was no intention to draw those games we did. But when we dropped down in third, I wasn't entirely disappointed. I will be if we lose to Mines. If we don't beat Mines, then we are further away from, you know, glory than I'd like to be at this stage to be honest we're really just struggling to get the that next level player in um, still having to sort of get all the players that we think are you know well positioned to uh, down the line be good enough to play for our team that's kind of where we're at um, right now so the team to take on mines will be Lambrobet uh, in goal Thompson at left wing back Paul Byrne right wing back Benavidez Otara as our centre back pairing, McLean and Queely as a defensive midfield pairing, and have been for a long time now. Agushi's going to be our box to box midfielder, Conde as our attacking midfielder, Manso up top with Velasco alongside him. I like how that team looks. Bench is all right. We've got Joseph Bull, Stuart McCord, still Mina, Labovic, Artie Buchanan, Bruno on the bench. It is a good team. Is it good enough to beat Mines? I certainly hope so. Otherwise, rushing through this season could be all in vain but the, this is the hope the hope is we can do something here um get a result and uh really put the pressure on them and hopefully the next video is us just going game after game and hopefully going much further in europe but we'll see we'll see how things play out because we're at home i think we just play our game now we did adjust um from the end of last season when we had that great win over Salka. i did say we were going to be less aggressive in terms of how we attack the domestically and I think that has helped I mean we're 12 points clear at the top while being able to rotate in a lot of youngsters some of the players we've bought are probably not the quality you'd expect to be buying at this stage but um, if they can do a job domestically and have that potential that's probably how we have to spend our money we have to be very smart Scotland is still not great in coefficient and we're certainly not getting money thrown at us um, in terms of sponsorship yet Kieta. We what we need here is we we absolutely can't afford to go behind at home. A lot of, a lot of space for them. I don't mind that finishing. More of that, please. Free kick now for mines. Lifted in headed. Oh, just clips the top of the bar. They do look. They do seem to be having a lion's share of the possession right now. Right, Agushi, Thompson, works it forward to Man, so he's kind of covered, but finds Velasco. Velasco, a touchdown. Oh, my Lord. <gasps> he's hit the bar. Oh, that's so cruel. We get in. It is a lovely lifted ball over the top of the goalie, but he hits the bar, and they get clear. Velasco now on the corner. Whips in Benavidez, and unfortunately, that one is also off target. Yeah, McLean not having a great game. One of the positions that I just haven't been able to find that next level player for. I'm going to say our shooting's not been good enough. Clearly, if we can get Manso in or even um, Velasco, their goalkeeper is there to be tested. But as we've not tested him so far, it's um, that's fairly obvious. Paul Byrne, back to Queely. McLean, back to Queely. Just have to... I like keeping the ball moving, but keeping it very safe. No mistakes, please. Lifted for I mean that that in itself is just doesn't make any sense to how we're set out to play. The centre back was not really under that much pressure, and he's lifted it out wide 
to a player that is about four feet tall and we go a goal behind. This is not where I want to be. This is not not looking good for us. It's my number one enemy, just a, a drilled cross. I just whip it across the box. Ah, it's horrible. I'm going to force them inside. Got to try something to counter that. Velasco now stands over a free kick, lifts it in, headed away. Agushi, need him to deliver a cross or a pass, something. McLean, who's maybe our playmaker, it just... When he doesn't play well, he just doesn't want to make a forward pass. I don't know what the keeper thought he saw there. Oh, can we force a mistake here? <sighs> I don't know if we call a mistake. But we can force a goal. What a strike by Condi. Oh my word. Now Condi, in the time <laughs> I've been away, um, teams desperately want him. Um, he is a player that we're going to struggle to hold on to. Um, Mainly because of things like that, but yeah, teams have been sniffing around him and uh, he was briefly upset with me because I refused to sell him. That won't change. Pla coming forward. Classic name. Gilman. Oh. Interception. Tackle. Oh, Condi. Oh, he's taking down Velasco though. Oh, no. Call it back. Pull it back, give the guy a card, give us a free kick, surely? Oh man, right. Encourage, I think McLean comes off. Joseph Bull comes on. Manso is not having a great game. I think we throw on Mina, who is not on the bench, so it's going to be McCord. Oh, dying minutes demand a bit more. Since their goal, they've been very quiet. It, but again, not good that we then have to take this game on the road, just don't let him cross it. That's a fine tackle. Joseph Bull with the tackle. They whip it anyway. Lamberbet has it. Oh, Lord. If he lays an assist on now, I'll never sell him. Not that I was thinking of, but, you know, I've turned some good profit on goalkeepers in recent windows, so yeah, you never know. That cannot be their ball. You can't let them get to that. I can't believe this. That is disgusting. We are just not, we're just not cut out for Europe. We are never going to compete if we allow that sort of thing to happen. That is truly awful. We've rattled the woodwork. We've... <sighs> it's just complete collapse. Look how many of them are forward there. I don't understand how this team just com just doesn't show up in these moments. I've just noticed that Mina is on the bench. I took on the wrong player. Oh, that is painful. Not happy with the performance. Um, we need to get to the second leg straight away. We're we're losing. I don't know what to do. Thompson suspended for the return leg. Oh, we're in a bad way. To speed up the season, and this is what we're getting in the in the knockouts is just. Horrendous. Just can't seem to get together and compete at that higher level. I think it has hurt us that Rangers and Celtic, although we've caught up and surpassed them, um, they haven't done very well in Europe at all. And in general, I think the quality of our league has not deteriorated, it just hasn't gone up um, the way we need it to, to, you know. I don't know how, but somehow I'm blaming this on the old firm. Right, we'll be back with a return lag, and we'll be looking for a miracle. It's all in this return lag against Mines. We're playing away, and we just drew 1-1 with St. Marin. It, it honestly couldn't be... This idea of trying to like get through as much of the season in a quick time to give us a chance to, to have more than one run at Europe before FM23 is starting to fall apart if we don't turn this around i don't know what is next because the end of the season will be flat you know we maybe make the scottish cup final i don't know should win the league 
but maybe the team we now have, there's too many young players who need to really get to that next stage. I'm not sure I'll be able to get much out of them before um, FM23. So let's see. We've still got a youth intake coming up as well, so at least there's that. But we'd need an absolute worldie to, <laughs> to get anything, I think. It's, um... We're in a tough spot. But we'll take on Mines today and hopefully we can turn this around. Team to take on Mines will be Lambrobet, uh, Lambrobet in goal. Otara is going to be left back because Thompson's suspended and I wanted to play my stronger player, so he's going to fill in left back. Paul Byrne right wing back. Labovic and Benavidez in centre back position. McLean and Queeley. I'm not going to say the defensive mission goes now. McLean's going in as a regista. We're going to go on the attack. Agushi continues the box box midfielder. Conde is the tag midfielder. Manso and Velasco up top. We just we have to be better. I think um, we'll make a couple of changes before this match. Um, force them inside. Not that that worked in the last game, but we'll see if it does this time. They should be more attacking, so we'll see. If we can catch him on the counter or whatever, but first goal probably decides this one. And if we don't get a goal by half time, we're probably gonna have to push forward. It's a pretty crappy position we're in, I would say. You know, we've been in tough positions before, but this uh, this sucks. Now looks like they lost their last game, so hopefully that's a good omen for us. I'm not sure. Just don't seem to be managing to do much in Europe with this squad. Domestically, fine. We we've got it, but yeah, the. The Brazilian box in Europe has um, not delivered. Amrabet comes to pick out this guy. Don't mind that. What is he doing now? You get kick this? No. And if he does, Quili. I'll keep the ball moving, lads. There's no. Don't get caught at the back. That's for sure. Otara, who's filling in at left wing back, already on a yellow. Plays the ball forward. Manso can run onto this. He's got Velasco in the middle. Conde's there. Conde's delivered. I don't know why I was like, oh, Velasco's in the middle. Velasco was on the far side. Conde has grabbed his second of this European fixture. He's got one in both legs and it puts us 2-2. And now, <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> I guess we're back in it. Um, but <laughs> do I change anything? Do I do we try and be a little more defensive? Do we worry about that? I mean, we've, we've scored one and one. I think we're going to go balanced. I just don't want to... Leave ourselves open right now. Let's see. See what we can do. Otara, do not lose it. Right. Good. Honestly, if Otara's losing the ball, we're in real trouble. He's one of our best players. He doesn't normally play left back, though. I'll, I'll admit that. Benavidez, move that out to the wing, right? Paul Byrne, he's been with us as long as anybody. Great ball forward for Velasco. Takes a touch. Goes around the player. Drives forward. Takes the shot. It's not even close. It's high. It's wide. It is anything but handsome. I think we're going to take passing space off. We're going to work the ball in the box. I just feel like we've got to be really careful here. The ball's put forward for Manso a chase. He's not going to be able to get there. It goes back to Dragowski. He puts it out wide to Kieta. It's around him that I'm really worried about. One of them just Getting a, a yard or two on one of our players. And just popping the ball in behind. Estevez. There's the run from Amri. Oh, just over the bar. I mean, at least we're back in the tie. Velasco now. Labovic. Oh, it's headed off the line. Agushi just makes a terrible pass. That is not okay. Thieleman able to just run over to it. And nobody gets over in time. They pull it back. Someone get a foot in. Right. Oh, it comes to nine. That was scary. I would have hated to get caught on the counter there, especially given we were going balanced. We're working the ball in box. We're taking our time. Try and make our chances count. We calm down the center back, who's now on a yellow as well. Right. Half time. We're, the tie is very much alive. I'm going to say we need more possession. Um, see what we can do. I'm, I'm kind of hoping that McLean, as the regista, at some point is just going to be like, oh, yeah, forward passes and just. Open up the defense, to be honest. Maybe asking a little too much. Agushi's not having a great time. I'm going to take on Joseph Bull to run about as the box to box midfielder now. Right, good header away. Velasco. 
Holds up, he's got to play the pass. Manso, you've got to use that pace, lad. He can't get past the defender. Pulls it back. It's a terrible pass. McLean with the tackle. Manso gets it again. Otara now out as a left back. Puts it forward. Manso's there. Can he pull the ball across to Joseph Bull? To Conde. Manso, pull it across. Bull. Conde! Oh, my Lord. Um. Oh, uh, we're leading. Conde with three goals in two games here. Otara not having a good time to take him off. <sighs> It is a big risk if I take on Archie Buchanan. I'm just going to tell him to go full back defend and I'm going to go Paul Byrne full back support. Just don't need them flying forward as much now. Right, Benavidez, just, just be perfect. Everyone, everyone be perfect. All I ask. Absolute perfection. Yeah, ball over the top. He's in heaps of space. No, 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 no. I can't believe he's done that. Why would he do that? He's not going anywhere. Even from there, from where he is, there's no reason to make that challenge. He's got a lot left to do. There's no one there in support. Madness from one of our center backs once again. Free, free. It's so disappointing. Ugh, our entire back line is now falling to pieces by the looks of it. Got to take on Archie Buchanan. Got to move them back to wing backs because now we 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 are not winning. Honestly, just too often has that been our downfall in big games in general. This FM. Um. They've given away silly penalties against these teams in Europe. Only need a goal here. Remind them of that. Actually, not sure what we're after here, boys. I think we're going to sit in a little bit. Um, no line of engagement. I think I'm going to distribute the kicks over the top quickly because we've got pace in that front line. Uh, I might put passes space on as well. There's no point in working the ball in the box if I'm also pumping it forward. So, one day, back to... Ugh, this is a horrible position to be in because look at their press. No. He's just knocked that forward for no reason. They're pressing us, but they weren't, they weren't close to him. That's offside. That is offside. When that ball is played, he is offside. I can't believe they're not looking at that. Are you telling me there's no VAR in this competition? That is horrendous. He is offside, surely, when that is played. I'm f furious. Well, no f point in playing a, a low line now, huh? If we're going to lose, we might as well lose by six goals. You go attacking in situations like this and... You never see the ball again. Go from Mina, fresh legs. I don't know. Just hope for something. We're not gonna get a f highlight. I, I, that is sh I, I don't know what. I don't. I do not know how to get the players in to compete while we're stuck in Scotland and not playing. You know some b tactic. Even. F Rangers have made it around further than us. Manso on form. He gets two assists. I need him to score goals. I don't know really what to say. That is uh, one of the worst results we could have had. Very poor. <sighs> you think takes ain't going to help me or nothing, so I've got to just... We're going to have to persevere the players we have and try at the end of the season bring in somebody who can make this team tick. Um, playmaking wise but ah, genuinely terrible result there not really happy with it this season at all win the Premier League sports, the Premier Sports Cup who cares gonna win the league who cares at this point right expanded the stadium stadium who cares are we gonna fill it no idea yeah this one this one hurts. I think um, 
I think we'll finish off the season in the next episode, probably. If we get the Scottish Cup final, I may bring you that, but it'll be youth intake and, I don't know, end the season, I guess. A review. It probably hasn't helped that we, we've sold some key players, but if we don't sell key players, we're just going to, you know, 38 million in overall balance is not great for a European side who wants to try and go as far as possible in Europe. Like, we just... We just cannot build up a good amount of money without selling players. So we sold players, but... And replaced them, I think, quite well, but obviously not not well enough. I feel like Manso should should have done more than he did in that game, but did we even get him the ball? Ah, well, assuming I've managed to edit this video and get up for Friday, I'll try and get another episode out for Monday, but cycle into FM23 is coming and uh, I'm just not sure we're going to achieve what I'm wanting to achieve, which is just, just, you know, get as far into ideally Champions League as possible, which we, the furthest we've been is, did we make quarterfinals? I'm not even sure. I think it's been the first knockout round every time. But I'm sure it's the first knockout round we're falling down at, so. Very disappointing. Yeah, I guess I'll I'll see you next time for some more Beyond Blue Brazil.